what people don't understand when you are working on your internal stuff, you, um, your traumas, your insecurities, all this stuff, what happens is your glow changes. So when you look in, now you're looking in the mirror, you don't see, you seeing a different woman, right? Because you're working on a new you. And it has nothing to do with, girl, I got to lose all this weight. No, that's too much pressure. That's too much pressure. No, 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 no. Hey, family, this is Andrea Everline, and you're doing life with Lakeisha on Living Her Truth. Welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Wooder from LakeishaWooder.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week, you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Hey, Andrea, thank you so much for saying yes to having this conversation with me today. Of course, of course. (laughs) (laughs) I'm super excited that you are here. So let me start by saying that I absolutely love your energy. I love your dedication and I love your determination. Like it's infectious and it's contagious, like all at the same time. (laughs) Yes, that's good to know. (laughs) <laughs> and so I'm, I'm about to say this to you so don't look at me crazy okay so okay. This, is a judge, this is a judge free zone okay gotcha um so sometimes I just wish that just by watching your your videos on Instagram that my muscles just automatically get bigger and my stomach get bladder just by watching gotcha. your videos <laughs> gotcha gotcha I think you know I think a lot of people um hope for that but we, we definitely got to put the work in <laughs> we definitely got to put the work in but see she put enough work in for all of us. Like, no, you gotta do. We all playing our parts, sis. Come okay. on, you gotta play okay. our part. You gotta okay. play yours. I play mine. If you, if you say so. If you. Say <laughs> so. <laughs> I love your beast mode. I'm telling you, I love your beast mode. Every but, day. Um, <laughs> but Andrea, so I like to start off every conversation with just talking about how I come to know um, the person I'm talking to. So I don't even know if you're gonna remember this or not. But we met probably like maybe two or three years ago, I went to an event by Woman to Woman Global. And we were like, was it the Heist area? I don't remember where in Houston, but here in Houston, I went to an event for Woman to Woman Global. And it was just me, you, and I think your sister. And Mm -hmm. maybe one other person um, besides the, um, the person that put on the event that was there. Mm -hmm. And you know, you came and you showed out. I mean, mm-hmm. you talked to us, you you talked to me as if it was like a hundred other people in the room. And mm-hmm. I just had so much respect for you because I feel like somebody else coming into an event and there's only like one or two people there probably would have would have walked out. Mm-hmm. You stayed, you showed up, you gave us value, and even stayed probably long, I, I, if I remember correctly, stayed a little longer than what the event was even uh, timed for. Mm-hmm. And so I just started following you from that day forward, because I just thought that was just so kind of you to, to do that. Because like I said, mm-hmm. most people probably would not have even done that. And then also just being in your presence, like you were so honest. It's just like raw and yeah. that is refreshing. Yeah. Refreshing, you know, because yeah. with me, I'm all about transparency. And I like to tell people um what most people won't tell you what's going on in the in the background, right? Because I feel as though that's what people need in order to get Absolutely. over their hunts to get past their whatever it is that they're facing at the time and so from from that day forward i started following you on on instagram and you're like one of my favorite like fitness athletes out there thank you thank you yeah, <laughs> thank yeah, you yeah. so much i am um, i do remember remember the event and just to to um kind of back what you're saying is that every event that i do whether it's hundreds of people to one <laughs> um, I believe that it's it's designed for me to be there. 
um, because I believe that the universe gives us and lines us up however, wherever we're supposed to be at that moment, right? And so my only objective is to um, show up with quality, but with the truth, right? And to be transparent. Every time I talk, I want to be as transparent as possible. And to, um, because I, I asked for this, right? And mm -hmm. God didn't, God didn't say, hey, every time I put you in front of somebody, it's going to be hundreds and thousands of people. My goal is just to play my part. And my goal is to do it very well, right? Mm -hmm. And so whenever I get an opportunity to share my story, I just try to make sure that I, I don't look at the number. I look at the quality. And I look at what I'm saying. But before I go into the event, I just ask God to lead me. Because I know who I am, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't know who I am. And the only way for you to know who I am, if I share that part with you. And the truth is in my message, all I care about is if, will it change your life? You know, will it inspire somebody? Will it make someone motivated to, to get started or maybe to continue or um, to be motivated by something that I'm doing, but to motivate them to what they're trying to do, right? So I never know how people will take me but that is not my that that's not what I'm there for to try to make sure that oh well will will she be sensitive or will he be sensitive to what I have to say I just share my story and what you take from it is what you take from it um I'm and and I think at that particular event um I just wanted to she she trusted me you know I, I don't even remember her name but she reached out to me but she trusted me to show up right and I believe that when we ask for God to show up in our lives, those little bitty things and those, um, it was a huge milestone for me. What she doesn't understand is that I never know who's in the room. You know, I never knew that this was going to come full circle with you. Right. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to sit with you now and to see you doing you on your podcast is inspiring for me and for you to say, Hey, by the way, I remember this moment. Right. And mm -hmm. so that, by the way, come full circle and that that's really the the joy in the journey i mean you you can't you, you, that's the joy in the journey of saying hey i i showed up for what i was called to do because mm -hmm. i asked god to open up opportunities and open up doors we never know what door is is it right mm -hmm. and so i said yes to it and i showed up and honestly i went off the energy that was in the room and so what you gave me mm -hmm. and what other people gave me in that room was the energy and that's why i stayed and that's it that's 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 that is just the gist of the story like i was just present and i think that's really important to be present in the present i mean i didn't look at it and say i'm going to give them 30 minutes because it's not tons of people here no mm -hmm. she asked me to come give my story and i didn't know how long that was going to take and we bounced certain things off of each other we poured into each other it was it was the right people there that were supposed to be there and now I'm sitting here with you. Came full circle. Yeah, kind of yep. cool. Man, you know this. Everything that you just said just even just plays more to the fact of how authentic and honest and transparent you are. Because what you just said, some of what you just said, I remember is what you told her then in that moment. Like you told yep. her, like it doesn't matter that because she was a little upset that it wasn't a lot of people at that event and i remember you telling her it doesn't even matter numbers don't even matter because she talking about me said that she came here and was able to get exactly what it is that she needed to get in this moment so Absolutely. that's what matters like i remember mm -hmm. you telling her that and it's so you know it's so crazy because i remember reading um I, rem I don't remember what I was reading, but I remember reading um, something that said that people remember how you make them feel. Mm -hmm. in the yes. moment. Like that's what people, that's what's everlasting with people. Mm -hmm. And how you made her feel, even though it wasn't necessarily me, but it was like how you made her feel in that moment, like left a, a, a huge impression on me. Because mm -hmm. I thought that was just really big big of you to to do that so mm -hmm. and so to like watch you you know three four years later and you still that same person you know it's just it's just amazing it's just mm -hmm. amazing. and then i also love the fact that you said too is that you know you just show up and you are yourself and how people take you it's not your problem not your business mm -hmm. 
Oh my goodness. So many people have a problem with that. Like so many mm -hmm. people are like not following purpose, mm -hmm. right? Or leave it there, Mark, because that's your thing. Leave mm -hmm. your mark every single day mm -hmm. because they are afraid of how people will react or respond or not react and respond to them. And it's like, but that's not even your problem or your issue to like figure out and solve your problem. Your thing is, is that you just show up as you and do what God said, told you to do. Yeah. I, I, I personally, I don't subscribe to what you think I should do for my life. Right. Because you, you don't have the manual. No one has a manual script of what looks perfect for me, nor do what looks perfect for them. So how could, I don't, I don't subscribe to, um, I just don't subscribe to other people's opinions, right? Um, my, my only job here on earth, like, and I, and I mean this wholeheartedly, and I, and I hope that when people see me and they see me living a full life, it's not because if, if I was to go off of what people think of how I should live, I wouldn't be living the way I'm living. If I should go off how people think I should live, right? And so my, my, my motto is leave your mark every single day is because if you look at what we're going through now in this trying time, right, through the crisis that we're going through, the pandemic that we're going through at this moment in time, there's so many people that are not getting that opportunity to, um, they, they woke up and today is their day, right? Like, and now people are in a panic. Golly, what, how am I going to pay this? What I'm going to do? And my thing is, is that and now everybody wants to focus on their immune system and focus on their body and get the right stuff. And every single day is an opportunity for us to leave our mark every single day. And, I, I, and it's not about running the fastest. It's not about eating all the right foods. Those are a part of your journey. That, that is something that you have to do in order to be wealthy, right? Your temple is where the wealth lives, right? And so the thing is, is that that is just part of the journey. But how I treat you, Lakeisha, how I go into the world, what I put into the universe, how I want to manifest it, all these things are part of my journey. Like, so what I, what I do every single day, and, and, and my significant other can tell you this, is that I practice what I preach. And do, do I fall short sometimes? Yeah, I do. But for the most part, I try to 90% of the time because I'm very hard on myself, is to say, what if, what if no one's looking at me, right? No one's looking at me. I'm in my house by myself. No one is looking at me, right? And I get to go to bed knowing that I didn't finish what I said I was going to do or do what I said I was going to do. But what about the person I was on the phone with earlier today, one of my sisters, and I say, you got to stick through this and you got to do this, and I'm not doing it, right? How am, I, how am I saying, how am I living by the motto of leaving your mark every single day? So, um, I, I look at our lives and I look at my life in particular, like, and I, I just shared this with my brother. Honestly, I said, man, I look at what I can remember in childhood to now. And the setup is epic, right? The setup God had for me to get me where I'm at now, to think the way I'm thinking now, to be who I am is so dope because it's so epic because even at times I thought I wasn't going to make it right. Times I thought I wasn't gonna lose a pound. Thought, times I thought like, there's no way I'm gonna get through this year. There's no way I'm gonna get through this month. Like I did, and I'm 15 years way. Like I'm looking back 15 years. I'm like, oh, I can do this, right? And so when you look back and you say, God, this is all a setup, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. This is all a setup. This this show is so epic. What's next? You mean to tell me I've been thinking the whole entire time, I've been manifesting this stuff in my life the whole entire time. And the more I continue to think about positive stuff and dope stuff, it's manifesting. Like I have that much power. So Lakeisha, hell yeah. I leave my mark every single day because this, this moment right now is the most epic moment that in 10 years from now, I'm gonna look back and say, I remember doing this podcast with Lakeisha. Or I might not remember, right? And you might have to remind me. And I say, I remember this moment. And look at her now. Look at the seed we sowed then. Look what we manifested then. And look at her now. Look at me now. Look where we're at. I remember being in my living room like this. This is all. Just, it's a set. It's set up for epic moments. That's all I'm going to believe. And if I learn how to leave my mark right here with you just today, like this interview, 
is the only thing I'm focused on. Three o'clock, when three o'clock came, I said, three o'clock, I'm giving Lakeisha my all. This is it. I'm going to be transparent with Lakeisha. I'm going to give her all. I'm going to be focused. I'm going to give her, you know, like, this is it. I'm going to be my raw self. What do you want from me, God, to give Lakeisha for her podcast, but also to give a message, right? And so that's what I'm saying. Like, this is all a setup for something epic. And I believe that. I truly believe that. And, and that's where that motto comes from. Leave your mark every single day because I think we're all in a panic. We're all hypersensitive to what's going on around us, right? Every single day. And we're, we, we are the solution to our problems 100% of the time, right? Not 80, not 90. We are the solution 100% of the time. So at this moment in time, I, I really honestly live by that motto. Leave your mark every single day. And I think that it is just an, it's just an epic moment for us. Like right now, it's, it's a setup. It's to get us to where we're trying to go. It is. And I believe that wholeheartedly. Yeah, y'all got to go and, and see the video version <laughs> on, on Facebook. Because I'm over here trying to, I'm holding it in my, yes, amen, girl. You better say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> See, an epic so moment. to people to just get it all out. And so you guys can hear it. Because that's, you know, that's amazing. I agree with you 100%. And I tell uh, in my messaging, I say all the time that sometimes we get, you know, amnesia of what it is that we have already overcome. Mm -hmm. get amnesia when that new problem or issue or mountain is in the front in front of us and we need to reflect back and look over the last 15 years and be like okay I was able to do that so I'm able to continue to move forward right mm -hmm. it's okay to to remember and reminisce on that so mm -hmm. oh my god so now you 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 brought up losing the pounds so I want to go to the beginning right okay. the beginning of your of your journey because what we see on uh, Instagram, what we mm -hmm. love, and pretty much what you just said right now, like leaving your mark, did it start with your weight loss journey? Mm -hmm. if so we mind talking about that a little bit. It didn't start with my weight loss journey. Okay. With, I, I, I was born, I, I've been an athlete my whole entire life, all right? So after I had Spencer, my son is when my, my, I, I gained weight. So I was playing ball in college, ran track, did all this stuff, right? And so I had my son my sophomore year in college. And I lost my weight, you know, I gained weight. And um, after that, I, a couple years after that, I didn't really pick up any weight. And then I just stopped working out, right? But I can tell you this, it, it did not start in my weight loss journey. Um, the, the transformation started uh, when I got, like, I was going through a lot mentally, mm -hmm. right? That I, that I was not addressing, right? So um, it started there first. It started there first. I started working. I did the core work. You know, I went, I went deep and still am, you know, like this is a continuous thing. Like I am constantly, what people don't understand when you are working on your internal stuff, you, um, your traumas, your insecurities, all this stuff, what happens is your glow changes. So when you look in, now you're looking in the mirror, you don't see, you are seeing a different woman, right? Because you're working on a new you. And it has nothing to do with, girl, I got to lose all this weight. No, that's too much pressure. That's too much pressure. No, 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 no. Because if you think of a woman, what we think about the first thing, if we've, if we've gained 100, all we're thinking about is losing 100 pounds. That is a, that's a lot of pressure for us. Because one, we've, we've eaten our way up to 100 pounds, right? Or stressed our way up to 100 pounds. So let's work on the core work. Let's work on the, the really what's true. Like, let's go deep inside of our core and understand that, like, all right, we got to really get down to the nitty gritty. What about our traumas? We got to start addressing our demons, right? And so what happened with me was I had a lot of demons. I had a lot of things that I didn't know what was going on. I was young, mid-20s, a little liar. I, I was just something else. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the truth. But I addressed them. Start looking in the mirror, start seeing a different woman, right? And when you see something different, you want it to be different. And what happens is, is that, I mean, I say when you see something different in you, you start changing other things about yourself, right? So your health changes, um, friends change, um, because your way of thinking started changing. So imagine me being around certain people that were toxic, and I'm working on myself because I'm also toxic, right? Now I'm healing myself and I don't want to be around the same because we hang around with 
what we are, if you ask me. So I'm hanging around this and, I, and I'm being this person and, I, and I'm giving my, and I've always been a positive person, but obviously there was something off in my life that I wasn't aligned with what I, where I was trying to, I was like, I just wasn't aligned. Like there was more than one or two things off, 10, 11 things off, 12, 13 things off. I don't know, but it was off. And I got a, I started working on the core, my, my internal stuff. And I started seeing a different woman, wanted more out of life, um, start changing up certain things around me. Um, I've never been a person with a lot of people around me, but I had certain people around me that I wasn't comfortable with. I wasn't, as I grew, they, they were not evol evolving with me. So that changed. Then I started, my, my, my path started directing me towards people that were like-minded. Mm -hmm. what, what does that do? Now I'm thinking more business. I'm thinking more health. I'm thinking more wealth. My mindset start changing. So what that did was it fed my desire to become more of what I was at that time. Now, I can look back and say, he, even when the first two years that I was working on me, um, I moved to LA. I remember I moved to LA. I got out of a toxic relationship, moved to LA. Um, and not saying that, sh that they were toxic. We both were toxic, honestly. Um, and, and, and when I moved to LA, that was a game changer for me because I was like, oh, wow, I got my wings back, right? And so I started becoming more creative. God was really working on me because I really was seeking. I, I submitted myself and surrendered myself to the, to the new me, right? So I said, you know what? I want this so bad because you know when, I'm sorry, but you know when you ain't on the right path. Like, you know. No. It, it, everything around you tells you and you deep down in your core knows this is not it right Absolutely. well in that that core mind was like this can't be it for me so i start doing work on me let's fast forward um I, I i get some of the weight off um god is truly blessing me um environment changes it changed and then i wanted more work done i'm like god i ain't done yet right and um, I saw some other things. More demons showed up, right? And, and when I say demons, I don't mean some black spirit. I'm talking about this internal thing that I'm, I'm battling, right? Okay. So I'm looking at myself and I'm saying, hey, you, you, you have a procrastination problem, right? Um, you say one thing, you do the other, Drea, you know? Um, I, I'm looking at certain things about myself that I'm saying, you can't, you got to stop doing that. Right. And I wanted to change it. And so I started working on that stuff. And then <laughs> let's fast forward to a couple more years later. Right. I'm 30. I'm about to be 37, April 22nd. Right. So about 30, about 30 years old was when like my break, I was like, Ooh, okay. It's time to change time to change. Now 30 years old. That's when the big change came. Like I was hungry for more. Mm -hmm. I was like, Oh no, I've, I've gotten here. And I kept giving myself these goals, right? You got to do this. Go, go. And it, it wasn't goals on, I got to have a million dollars. It was goals on, this year we're seeking more wisdom. This year we're seeking more peace. This year we're seeking, like, that's the type of stuff that I started craving more than anything. Because God was blessing me financially. I, I was working a, my, my dream job at the time. I was traveling the world. I was good, right? So imagine financially you're stable now, which you wasn't before, right? Now financially I'm truly stable. In my early twenties, I was all over the place. Who who's not early twenties, right. right? Right. Thirty years old, I'm stable financially, and now I'm like, God, man, now I I, I want peace. I want to be a good steward. I want to be a good steward over my body, over my money, over my relationships, over my friendships, and. You, and that's what my focal point was at that time. Like, I started working on that stuff. Now, what you see, when you see me grinding like that in the gym, that's just who I am. If I don't have that, like, that is my happy place. Because I knew at a point in time in my life that I remember being at that point. So t sometimes when I'm running on that treadmill, I promise, excuse my language, can I curse? Yeah, go ahead, girl. It's hard <laughs> Sometimes when I'm on that treadmill, I'm like, this bitch can't catch up with me no more. <laughs> you know, because I'm looking, literally, I'm imagining, your imagination can be 
something awesome for you. And I'm imagining that old Drea behind me. No, ma'am. Ain't happening. I left you for a reason, right? That holds me accountable to say, I got more work to do. If I ever think I, I stop, I stop evolving. Mm -hmm. I stop evolving. God continues to show me there's more work you need to get done. There's more, there's more, there's more. Every level I'm realizing, okay, this season right now in my life, Lakeisha, all I care about is dealing with my trauma. Trauma that I didn't even know I had. You know, mentally dealing with my trauma, honestly sitting with my trauma saying, okay, anxiety, you came here. You're here with me. I sit down with you, anxiety. Why are you here? Got it. I'm aware. Now go back to where you come from. Now I've gained my power back, right? Mm -hmm. My thing is gaining my power back from my traumas. The truth is, is that my trauma, it, it, it won't cripple me. It won't stop me. Most people have trauma. And if you ever listen to them, they're constantly bringing it up. I remember, you know, my dad left me. My mom left me. I have abandonment issues. When will you stop talking about your abandonment issues and fix them, right? Okay, you got them. Real deal, right? Mm -hmm. But we, we got to fix them. You're the solution to the problem. You know you got abandonment issues. Let's fix them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know you got daddy issues. Let's fix them. What if daddy never comes back? Let's fix them, right? Mm -hmm. What about making you whole, right? And so that's what I focus on most is about, God, I want to be whole for you. What if my mother's passed away? I, I, I want to be whole for you. Mm -hmm. My dad, I want to be whole for you. You daddy, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, what you give me on a daily basis and what my assignment here on earth is to do my assignment. That right there gives me so, a whole different type of wholeness that people will never understand. My sister said something to me the other day. She said, I've noticed in every relationship you've been in, mm -hmm. you've never switched up you, whether they left you or not. She said, you've never stopped doing what you've been called to do. Ooh. And you keep evolving. Mm -hmm. And I said, I am not a, they, 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 I will not allow any person to leave with my assignment. Mm. You can't leave with my, that's mine. It belongs to me. I was called to do what I'm doing right now today. Whether it be talking to you, whether talking to a stranger, whether I was called to do that at that moment in time, this is my assignment. This is my calling. This is my purpose. You can't leave with it. You can't. You can come and join me if that's what God had you here for, for me. You can pull into me, but you can't take that with you. Mm -hmm. This is mine. It belongs to me. So. My only objective here on earth at this moment in time, why I breathe and I have air in my lungs is to pursue what God has called me to do and do it whole. That's it. I don't, I'm not doing it halfway. I'm not doing it your way. I'm not doing it her way. I'm not doing it the pastor's way. I'm doing it how God's called me to do it. And if you don't like it, it ain't for you. That's mm -hmm. it. But my purpose is for somebody. Mm -hmm. That's it. And, it and, if, and if they get wholeness from it, and they get, hey, man, that girl there, she's something else. She came to, man, she changed my life. I was there for you because that's what God called me to do. And I did it wholeheartedly. And if my only purpose was for you, Lakeisha, let it be for you. Right? Mm -hmm. Let it be for you. And let's, and let's, 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 let's right now be in this moment, be present in it, and, and honestly rejoice in every bit we have and say, hey, I left my mark today. Yes. That's it. That's, That's it. it. I'm, not, I'm not here for anything else but this moment. This is the only moment that matters to me at this moment. It's not how, how good and how many people will subscribe to your podcast, how many likes we will get. It is for me and you to talk now. And if somebody in India hears it and they say, whoa, right now is the day I'm going to change my life, I say we did our job. All right. Oh, That's my it. goodness. That's, That's it. That's it. Oh my That's it. goodness. See, see you guys, this is the reason why I follow Andrea and this is the reason why I love her because her weight loss, don't miss it. Her weight loss wasn't even about losing weight. Like she didn't no. even focus on that. She focused on her mindset. It's a whole yes. like, approach. It went from mindset to dealing with her traumas to seeking wisdom from God to, you know, chasing purpose. And a byproduct of that, 
mm-hmm. was the weight being dropped, was yeah. her being financially stable, you know, because, was her, you know, was the people moving out of the way who no longer served her and her mission for fulfilling her purpose. Think about it, though, Lakeisha. If if we all focus on our mental and the true wealth of our body, you're gonna lose. If you're overweight, you gotta lose the weight because you're putting nothing but godly foods in you. Yeah. Right. Yes. If you if you if you want prosper, like you're thinking wealth, you're gonna yes. have it. You it's 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 a given. If you work on the internal part, why even worry about the pounds you gotta lose? You you don't worry about that. You know what I'm saying? Like you just because when you're doing the right things and you're seeking the right stuff, it, it happens. It your glow would just be it's just different. It's way different. Look, you know, I've never heard a, a fitness expert talk about it from, you know, talk about faith as a way to really like lose the weight. Like I've never heard a fitness expert talk about it from your perspective. Which mm. is another reason why I, I follow you. Yeah. So when did you have that mindset shift to say, you know what, this is what I'm going to focus on. You know, when I, when I'm showing up, leaving my mark and mm-hmm. people are watching me and what I'm doing, I'm going to focus on purpose and faith and just serving God. Like when did you make that mind shift to incorporate that in your business? Um, it's when nobody was looking. When nobody was looking. Mm-hmm. When nobody was looking, it was just me and God mm-hmm. because in, in, I, I, I wouldn't have, nobody was looking it was just me and God that was my source I didn't I I was I I needed God like I needed and I'm not trying to make this like this whole spiritual thing but I am very I needed God and I needed direction and it had nothing to do with weight loss I just wanted to do well by God that's it and still do you know and and like I say I'm every day I'm seeking just God's well doing you know I do go with my heart I do go with what I feel I go with my spirit but for the most part like that faith I mean it was it was kind of put in me at a young age but I really want to make God happy I really do because I I want to show up for God like Mm -hmm. I understand that you might I one thing I know about humans (laughs) No matter how much you love Andrea, you I'm going to disappoint you. That's one thing I know. Yeah. And so when this faith started, it started with me when nobody was looking, when nobody believed in me, when nobody saw what I saw and still don't. But the truth is, is that it started when nobody was looking. I remember my grandmother used to say, I, I used to hear her say to other people, not necessarily to me, I was too young. She said, um, she wanted, they, I guess it's the saying, um, catching somebody with their pants down or something like that. What's that saying? Um, you see who somebody really are when you catch them with their pants down or something like that. I can't really, I don't know the saying, but if, if you were to walk in, if nobody, I'm not going to, this is consistent. This is a hundred percent guarantee. Mm-hmm. If you was walking to my house right now without me knowing you were coming, my kitchen would prove to you that I live what I talk about. Catch me with my pants down. Catch me when you don't know. If you were to walk inside of a facility, any gym, it's not just for the 30 seconds I put on Instagram. You will catch me with your, I, that is how hard I go every single day because I know there's somebody that's wishing they had the opportunity I had. When you, when, when I'm up late at night or I'm researching and I'm studying, catch me with my pants down. That is what I've caught, like I'm dedicated. I, I know this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. This is it. Like, I don't, I don't have a plan B. I don't, I don't have a plan B. Fitness is not, this is the deal. Like what people understand is like fitness. It, it's a beautiful thing. I, I do it very easily because I'm an athlete. I'm an athlete. So a lot of people that have never played a sport or have not, are not athletic. They think like, wow, you went from being 285 pounds to being this guru. I'm like, and I've always been a fitness guru. So I was a fitness guru that turned to, to be fit 285 pounds. Now I got me back times even better. So now I'm, I'm even better than what I was before because now I have the knowledge and I continue to see, seek the knowledge. Now I got the wisdom. Now I'm, I'm practicing the peace in it. Like I got all this stuff that comes and connected to it now to where I'm better than what I was before. So 
yeah, it's it started when no one was looking, honestly. So to answer your question, Lakeisha, my my uh, my faith has never wavered. It's never and it would never alter. It would never alter. And it, it it started when nobody was looking because that's all I had. You know, nobody believed in Andrea when Andrea was doing wrong. You know, fam, family members that you know, friends they they rather talk about you before they believe in you because if you're on the wrong path, give somebody something to talk about. You know. When you're on the right path, people are slow to talk about that, you know? So at that time, I didn't have nobody believing in me. Everybody was just like, oh, okay, you know, I hear you, I see you. But no one cares about what you do until you play, get, until you have your hand and you win with it. And I've been winning with my hand. And it wasn't the best hand. But the cards that I was dealt, and I, I've been winning with my hand, like literally. You know what, well, using your example, if you walk into we walk into my house right now and look at my kitchen, you you would know that I practice what I preach. You know the reason why is because you're chasing purpose. I'm chasing purpose, yep. It's because you're chasing purpose. When you are chasing purpose, all areas of your life will automatically fall into alignment. Because like you said yep. earlier, you know, when you're chasing, you know, chasing purpose, you have no other choice but to deal with the traumatic experience. You have no other choice but to look at things differently. You have no other choice but to put, you know, good things in your body because it's all about purpose. And, and, and my, one of my whole reasons for having this podcast is to help people to become more self-aware because mm. awareness will help you to see the areas where there's, there's lack, where you need to be tightened up, right? So everything can fall into alignment. And I mm. really hope that people just really get the message when you said, you know, people was like, you went from 285 pounds to a fitness guru. And you was like, but I was always a fitness mm -hmm. guru. I was a guru who just so happens to become 285 pounds and now I'm back to myself. Like you guys, like don't miss that. Mm -hmm. Substitute fitness guru for whatever it is that you are, what your mm -hmm. purpose is. Because mm -hmm. who you were and, and your purpose, that's who you, that's what it was as soon as you took your first breath. Before you even took your first breath, when you was forming mm -hmm. your mother's home, your purpose was already, always, already there. Mm -hmm. Because we, you know, we go through life, we have these different experiences, we have these different relationships and things like that, but purpose has always been there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have been a little sidetracked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have gone through some things. Yeah, you have mm -hmm. some traumatic experiences that you need to heal from, but your purpose is still there. Mm -hmm. It's all about getting back to who you originally were and then bettering that person. You know, just like mm -hmm. Andrea said, you know, mm -hmm. that when she's on a treadmill, the person she's looking at is the old Andrea. Like, mm -hmm. that's who you need to be in competition with, the old you. Mm -hmm. Not the person that's next to you, not the person that's in front of you, not the person that's behind you, but but you. Mm -hmm. So, oh, this is, this is why I wanted you on the podcast because I knew that you would come from a holistic perspective because you guys like we had this whole conversation already and now one time did she talk about carbs hit training eight a minute fasting none of that because it's all about purpose and seeking wisdom from for you know seeking wisdom for god and just being your best version mm -hmm. of you and how the the weight loss, the finances, and everything else would just naturally align, fall into alignment. Yeah, because when you've been a good steward, when you're when you're seeking good stewardship, uh, it, that falls with mind, body, soul, all of that, like mm -hmm. finances, partnerships, friendships. Like when you're seeking true stewardship, and you're saying you want good stewardship with across the board, and you want to be aligned with those things that that comes with it you know like you you gotta you gotta <laughs> it's it's like what i was saying like i can't ask for um just a healthy body but i don't have healthy relationships how does that work it's not it's not even a real connection there right right it it doesn't make sense so i got a healthy body i look bomb but mm -hmm. i got a health a, an unhealthy relationship i'm in an unhealthy relationship I told my significant other when we got together, I said, one thing I will never accept is an unhealthy relationship. I will get out of it before we get into it, right? Because I love me enough and I love you enough to not put us through that, right? Mm -hmm. And so what I practice on a daily basis 
it's healthy relationship tactics to make sure that we living our truth with one another. We're choosing each other, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it be a romantic relationship, my friendships, my sisterships, my brother, whatever it may be, I'm saying I choose you, right? And you choose me and we will be good to each other. Because when I choose something, that means I'm making a conscious decision to say, I, I'm responsible for what the energy I give it, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not choosing you to give you negative energy. I'm choosing you because I want to share something special with you. So yeah, that, those, these are choices. And I, I don't live in a miserable space. Like, have I before? Yeah. And I was a byproduct of that, right? Mm -hmm. But the space I live in now, I'm a byproduct of that. <laughs> so yeah, I, I practice what I'm trying to put out in the universe is what I give to my closest relationships. And I try to make sure that, hey, this morning I was on the phone with my sister, I holding her accountable. Hey, since I'm about to go run, you did your, you know, because this is something that we do on a regular basis. You share with me your goals this week. I'm a part of your tribe. Let's get it, right? That's what it's about. It's about saying, hey, you're in my tribe. You're part of my, your, your relationship. I chose you, sis. You chose me. We're going to give each other this good energy. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love the fact that you said that it's a choice. And then, you guys, she didn't just stop there. Like, catch it. She said there's a choice. And then she took action. It's that action part that gets a lot of people tripped up. Because we can say yeah. all day long that, you know, I, I choose you. But are you going to put in the work? To, mm -hmm. for that relationship to, to you know to be great are you going to put in, mm -hmm. put in work so you know you can have the body that's necessary for operating your purpose like you have to make the choice everything starts with a choice god gave us free will so everything starts with a choice but we also have to take action that's going to back up the choices that we made and like andrea mm -hmm. said then you become a byproduct of that mm -hmm. i love that that's amazing. You're awesome. Yeah. You're awesome too. Thank you. You are awesome. Thank you. Before Thank I let you. you go, I do want to ask you two more questions. Um, no give us an audible or a book recommendation. I love audible. Um, book recommendation, audible recommendation that you've read or listened to that has impacted your life. And the author that I, I, I read a lot is um, Andy Andrews. Um, you can read any. I started with the Traveler's Gift, the Noticer, the Notice Year Two. If you follow Andy Andrews, um, start with the Traveler's Gift. It gives you six principles in there. Um, repeat those principles for thirty days. Um, Andy Andrews is an amazing author, but it gives you um, one of my favorites that I give a lot of my mentees that I actually mentor myself is um, the Traveler's Gift. It's a dreamer. It's about a guy, um, and I'm just give you a brief synopsis. But it's about a guy that um, thought his life was um, tied to his Fortune 500 company, right? Mm -hmm. He gets fired and he feels like his life is over. But what happens is he, some, you got to read the book to know, but he's dreaming. And in his dream, <clears throat> he's going through these different, he, he meets Solomon, he meets all these amazing people. Mm -hmm. I'll give you King Solomon and Frank. And he's learning lessons from each one of them about purpose. Mm. And then the last part is, is he's outside of himself and he's in the place where God really wanted him looking at himself create. And he was a creator of his future and he was never tired. So God will, the thing is that what I got from that book was God will remove you from something, whether you think you're tied to it or not to get you to where you're truly have to supposed to be which is your purpose that you have on this earth and that's what it was in this down in the traveler's gift is to get him where he really where god really wanted him and most time people die um with a dream and in this particular book um it was about him not dying with this dream but living the dream and he had to god had to fire god had to get him fired in order for him to live out his purpose and he's one of the most wealthiest men ever wow because we think that we think we're tied to something but um the traveler's gift is one of my favorite books to have people read start off and when you get into andy andrew andrew's books you'll mm -hmm. understand why i love it so much and then you go to the noticer and the noticer too and my mentor actually um 
my mentor actually um, told me that we, we, we were training before and he told me that he wouldn't train me because I wanted what he had. He was an uh, ex-professional player. And I said, um, I want to, I want to know what you know in fitness. He said, well, he said, what is the difference between a, uh, um, what is the difference between a, a reader and a non-reader? And I said, knowledge. And he said, exactly. And he said, um, I want you to read this book. And he gave me the traveler's gift. And it changed me. I read that book four times, five times before. And I would be in a sauna. I remember reading it in a sauna. I was stuck to it. I read it one time, the whole book in a sauna for like two hours. And I was stuck to it. I get out the sauna, still glued to it, get back in, get out the sauna. And I wanted to finish the book because I got so into it. And um, but I remember when he, he told me, he said, I want you to finish this book. And before you finish this book, I mean, before you even um, talk to me, you got to finish this book. And I took him for play. I didn't read the book at first. And then I'll see him at the gym. I'm like, all right, I'm ready to work out. And he was just like, you read that book? I'm like, no. He was like, get out of my face. <laughs> and he did that. He did that three, three to four times to me. Mm-hmm. And the last time he did it, I remember him being on the elliptical. And I walked up to him and I was like, man. And I was like, I started the book. He said, but did you finish it? But I didn't even, I didn't start it. I just kind of read the introduction of it. Mm. So I gave him this, I tried to make it seem like I read the book, but I didn't read the book. And he said, what's the six principles? I said, oh, he said, you didn't read the book. And I said, no, not yet. I just read, he said, get out of my face. Finally, that's when I read it in a sauna. I had it in my, my gym bag because he's the one that gave me the book. Had mm. it in my gym bag. And I was in the sun and I was reading it and I got glued to, glued, glued to it that day. And I've read, I've, that's, I read a lot of Andy Andrews books and it's so motivational. And for a person that um, truly needs a spark under their butt, I'll say Read the Traveler's Gift by Andy Andrews. Okay. One of, my favorite, one of my favorite authors and one of my favorite books. I'm definitely going to have to, to check that one out because now you got me interested on in what the six principles are. I will need to, I need to find that out because. Now you got to get past. Remember I said this, get past when he runs into the tree. He's going to doubt himself and he's going to run into a tree. He's going to, he's going to, he's just remember when you get to this part, um, he's doubting himself and he's thinking about killing himself because he's, uh-huh. he's, he lost his job. Uh-huh. Just get past that part. Okay. Because it's okay. slow at the beginning. And then, and then it, it gets juicy. It gets so good. And you're like, ooh, ooh. And you can relate. And that's one thing in the book. Wait, wait, wait. There's one thing in the book. I'm excited about this. There's one thing in the book. He was on, he, and, I, and remember I said this to you, Lakeisha. Uh, and this is a nugget I want people to take from. This is how bad I want you guys to read this book. Is that he was on the, he, he ended up running into, in his dream, he ended up running to Christopher Columbus. And he said, I remember Christopher Columbus was on the boat. And he said, um, the guy said, he, he's like, man, he saw, I don't want to say too much, but it looked like a famine ahead. And Christopher Columbus said, I'd rather die moving forward than going backwards. <laughs> and that's when I said, ooh, I can't wait to read this. And I was just like, I, I, I had to finish reading the book, but he said, I'd rather die moving forward than going selling forward. I'd rather go towards this way, towards that famine, because if we go back, we're we know we're going to die if we go back, but I'd rather see what's in front of us. And so that's a nugget that I took from that book that I, that, that's what really got me interested. And I said, I'd rather keep pressing forward because going backwards, there's, there's nothing there for me. So I have to continue to continue to evolve. And it's important for us all to, because going backwards, it's not, it's not, it should not even be a part of our thought process. I'd rather die moving forward looking forward. I really think about the famine forward than going back because I know there's death back there. Dark days back there. That's going to deliver somebody right there. That delivered me just now. That's going to definitely deliver somebody. Like, it, it, was, it was a dope. That's, that's, awesome. awesome. need it. wow. that's what I needed to say in the book. That part was like, ooh, and then I just I kept reading after that. It was good. It was so good. I loved it. Yeah, it's so it. good. I'm going to I'm gonna yeah. definitely gonna have to check that out and put that on and put that on the list. You guys, check the show notes for the Audible recommendation link. Check the show notes because I'll put the book in there as well. And so last question, when describing the meaning of living your truth, complete this phrase. What is your third word when you hear this phrase, okay? So third word? Third, your third word. I'm gonna give you two and you tell me what the third word is, okay? okay. Self-awareness, 
purpose and truth. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> truth. That's what my third word is. Living your truth. I That's love my it. third word. Truth. Yeah. 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 That's good. Because self awareness, self -awareness purpose, purpose, and truth. Yeah. The truth. Yep. That's that's what it is. That's what it is. I love that. Man, Andrea, thank you so much. This was awesome. Thank you. This thank you awesome. so much. Thank you for being present in the moment. Like you said that several different times, and I appreciate that. I do. I appreciate that because we don't do that enough, just in general. We don't even do that enough. Being present in the moment. So yeah. thank you for that. Yeah.